find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have you. your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Six, six, six. Hey guys, welcome back to the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg, Sorgatron, at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Video producer up here in the Pittsburgh area uh, for some local promotions. And with me, my buddy from Texas, Eamon. He's the commentator, play-by-play for Inspire Pro Wrestling down there in somewhere in Texas, Austin. Austin, right? I don't, beautiful. It Austin, all meshes Texas. together in my head. I apologize. You know, It's, it's one giant, giant piece of land. In and, my and head, Texas is the size of New Jersey for some reason. But, you know. <laughs> not, not, not entirely sure but yeah um yeah so i'm happy to be on again to talk about some more indie wrestling sort yes as i as i demasculated your state but we'll talk yes. but the rest of the show is about your state so it's gonna make it better i promise uh but of Thank course you. here at the indie mayhem show uh where we talk indie wrestling you can join us here every tuesdays every tuesday Damn, it's late. 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central for guys like Eamon. Um, and uh, thanks a lot to our friend Basic Sickness for the intro music, outro music. And check them out at basicsickness.com for free music downloads, music videos, and more. Great supporter of uh, Ventures for a long time around here, actually. Um, and you can also check out our websites. We're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. That's where you can find this show. Uh, the proper wrestling mayhem show where we talk about stuff that's on the tv and uh we do other wrap-ups after shows throughout the week and other content so go check all that out there and uh please follow us on twitter at mayhem show wrestling mayhem show on facebook uh google plus the facebook group and of course this show audio and video formats on itunes stitcher youtube spreaker and iheart radio websites apps however you like to digest this we just hope you do. And you can also drop us a line to goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or drop a line to the hotline at 412-206-WMS0 to leave a voicemail. we got a handy call button over on the website as well if you can't do well with numbers. Um, and, of course, uh, and with that, let's toss it to Eamon uh, to introduce our guest for this week. From his yes, neck of the woods, he- I believe. It was my turn to pick a guest, and, and I wanted to grab some. This is someone I actually wanted to grab on the show for a good while. Uh, he's somebody that's been making a name for himself now all across Texas. He's got a he's got a long history uh, uh, working with some of the greats in professional wrestling, and, and I'm glad to have him on this week. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, Thomas Shire. Thomas, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, let's make this the lowest rated show ever. <laughs> we planned you. Uh, it's definitely the goal. Um, let's start yeah. it off. Let's start it off the way we uh, normally start off with our guests. Uh, just sort of a baseline question: What is your first ever memory of uh, professional wrestling? My first ever memory of professional wrestling. Um, hmm. probably, probably the only thing that really stands out, like early on in my life, was from one of the early Slamborees, I think it was, like Slamboree 94, 93, uh, Terry Funk wrestled Tully Blanchard. And the thing that stood out the most was not really the match or anything like that or the people in it, but uh, that Terry Funk gave Tully Blanchard a pile driver from the second rope onto a chair. Uh, <laughs> so that was... That, that that would probably be one of the earliest things that I remember about wrestling. I mean, I've watched it basically. It, it was on in my household all throughout, you know, before that. But uh, that's probably uh, the first memory. And then hearing my brother just, like, talk about how, you know, Terry Funk has to be the devil or something like that because <laughs> he's just this, he's this crazy man. And then t- later on in the show, Terry Funk with the flaming branding iron hitting uh, Dustin uh, Dustin Rhodes <laughs> in the head. Oh, nice. <laughs> so definitely, I, I, and interesting you say uh, uh, Terry Funk, for example, because uh, the thing I think most people who know of Thomas Shire may know is that one of your big uh, 
training trainers, I guess you would say, would be with Dory Funk Jr. Uh, now, did you start off training with Dory? Did you have any training beforehand? And, and uh, how exactly did you get into, you know, becoming a professional wrestler? Uh, yeah, that was my, he was my first trainer. Dory is my first trainer. Uh, it is kind of funny looking back at it now, seeing, seeing that, uh, the effect that Dory's had on my, not just my wrestling career, but pretty much my life. Uh, it's always something that, uh, it's pretty much the first thing, you know, they have, when do you get into wrestling kid? And, you know, I, I started with Dory in February of 2007. I had just gotten out of high school, uh, a couple months earlier than that in like June of 06. Uh, and I started about a month before my 19th birthday. So <laughs> I got in there pretty early in Dory. I was there at Dory school for about three years. So. I trained with him for a pretty long time and got to actually uh, wrestle him uh, probably about eight or nine months into training, which was which was oh, wow. really cool. And then uh, after after his kind of uh, retirement tour, I guess for all Japan, he would um, just wrestle <laughs> on the shows every month. It's like yeah, he he retired in Japan, but you know he'll wrestle his students. So but that was that was always <laughs> an awesome thing. It was you know, I uh, get to wrestle him every month. So it's something that not a lot of people get to say. <laughs> awesome. Definitely. Uh, you mentioned the big influence that Dory had on your, on uh, your wrestling career. Uh, do you think uh, his style of wrestling, or I guess the style of the funks in general, or, or that kind of, that kind of style influences your wrestling style in any way? Uh, I would say, well, it's kind of funny because I didn't, I knew of Tori, or Tori, <laughs> I knew of Terry more than I knew about Dory, uh, just because, you know, Terry from his run in WCW early in the 90s, and then uh, later on when he would like wrestle Chris Candido and stuff, uh, yeah. and that one match where he got kicked in the head by that horse, um, and yes, then of course did. ECW. Um, watching ECW uh, growing up and stuff like that. So I knew about Terry a little bit more uh, than I did with Dory. So I knew, I don't know, I didn't really uh, know a whole bunch about um, Dory's style, but I'd always watch people uh, that he wrestled, uh, like Ric Flair and, uh, uh, well, that's, that's just one person to name. Um, and I knew about the Briscoes and things like that. So I knew about that style of wrestling, but I guess I knew kind of more about crazy Terry Funk doing moonsaults at, you know, 50 some odd years old, uh, mm -hmm. more so than I knew about Dory. But then uh, as time went on, uh, I found like DVDs and things like that about Dory wrestling Jumbo Sharuda, um and him wrestling the Briscoes and uh, people like that. And then, yeah, I would I would say that that influenced uh, influenced my wrestling style even more, uh, possibly because he was my trainer, but also possibly just because of the respect that I have for uh, a lot of the, the wrestlers that came up in his in his era of wrestling and uh, the wrestlers that continued the tradition, I guess, of uh, that type of uh, professional wrestling. Yes, definitely. Um, now you mentioned. Uh uh, and one of the other places you got a lot of training from was I know you went to All Japan Pro Wrestling to train in the uh, All Japan Dojos. Uh, you mentioned Dory's sort of influence with there. Uh, was was you training up there basically through Dory? Uh, yeah, because Dory, was it? Dory was retiring, I guess, officially uh, in Japan, even though I guess he, he's had a few more matches or maybe just one more match. Mm -hmm. Um where him and Terry wrestled, uh, I think a year ago in Japan, but, um, in 2008, he was doing like a farewell tour and, uh, Osamu Nishimura came to our school, I think in December of 07 and kind of like scouted out people a little bit. And then, um, he would come kind of like bi-monthly. Uh, and then after Dory's tour, he kind of, he came and, um, Ryan Mitchell went with Dory over to Japan for the first time for his farewell tour. Uh, and then we had a uh, former heartthrob for WWE, uh, Antonio Thomas came uh, to one of the camps that uh, Nishimura came and he went there. And then 
the next time, the next camp was when I, uh, I guess he said, oh, this kid's not too bad. I'll take him to Japan with me, you know? And, uh, <laughs> so yeah, but, uh, Dory's, Dory's, um, you know, influence in Japan and everything, uh, and his relation, his relationship with all Japan, uh, that definitely helped me go there. I mean, I had been wrestling, I started wrestling in February of 07 and I went there in, uh, October of 08. So yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that's a little over a year. So that's kind of crazy to think that I even went over there, uh, and then to actually go over there. And then like our training with Dory was a little bit different. Um, he didn't really focus a lot on the calisthenics and things like that. It was more about getting a, uh, a basics for professional wrestling and learning how to do things and, you know, making, you know, making things, um, crisp, I guess, uh, as far as the basics. And then when I went to Japan, it was more like calisthenics and then the basics training. So, mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of a double whammy, but, uh, you could see a lot of Dory's influence. He said that when he would go over there and training people like, uh, uh, Ichiro Tenru and, uh, Jumbo Shiruta and things like that, he even, kind of help teach Baba a little bit, I guess, or, um, Baba would kind of, uh, come in for his training, um, with Dory, uh, in Amarillo and, uh, Dory, uh, I guess was teaching arm drags one day and he, he was teaching in a different way than giant Baba knew it. And so Baba taught him a different way. And then Dory kind of, you know, put that into his training. So it's kind of a give and take a little bit for, mm -hmm. uh, you could see a lot of the influences that stayed in the dojo for all Japan. Uh, and then some of the things that Dory got from Japan. So it was, it's a cool little mix. Awesome. And I mean, uh, you mentioned sort of the honor that it comes with being able to wrestle and I mean, really anywhere overseas, but definitely, uh, in Japan. Uh, what was it like wrestling in front of a, a, a Japanese crowd, uh, and how different is it compared to, you know, wrestling in America? Uh, well, see, the thing of it was is that I'd never, when I went there, it's it's just something that makes it so bizarre is that I never even had a match at an indie show, like, or what's considered an indie show. I always did mm -hmm. Dory's, Dory's Bang TV shows, which, I mean, they're indie shows, and we had crowds and things like that, but sometimes it would be, you know, a lot of the students' family or things like that. Or, um, so it's different going to Japan because I had, I had watched a lot of Japanese wrestling, but uh, I'd always heard you can watch and train like the Japanese, but you'll never be prepared when you actually go mm -hmm. to Japan because you you know nothing when you go there. It's just such a, it's a culture shock kind of to someone uh as young as I was, I mean, I was 20 years old at the time. So of course I was just kind of <laughs> running around there like, Oh my God, what am I doing here? Um, but the crowds in Japan, it was, they were really cool. Like it was, um, it wasn't so much like you come out and you got to say, you know, Hey, F you or something like that to get a reaction from them or, you know, mm -hmm. have this kind of big jumping around or anything like that. If you just walked out to the ring and got in the ring, you know, they all eyes would be on you, kind of, and they'd be focused on you. And then what you did in the ring and things like that, I feel like uh, uh, not only from the training that I got with Kaz Hayashi and uh, Osama Nishimura over there, but them actually uh, watching my matches and saying, you know, hey, this, you know, this is what you did here, and maybe Japanese fans they won't be like American fans here, so maybe try this. So it was it was a good learning experience. Uh, it's something that I wish I could do again. <laughs> that would be <laughs> that would be another goal. So awesome. yeah, it's just it's just different. I didn't really get that. Uh, a lot of people they tell you like there's that you know you do a move and then and then they clap and then nothing and then they study you. Like I didn't I, I don't know if it was just the people I was wrestling against or because they didn't know me or any certain things like that. So um, or maybe just all Japan has a different crowd than maybe different places. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just something I didn't, I didn't really get that like, Oh, they, they just get up for one thing and then they go back down. It's kind of, you know, sometimes they would be going crazy. I mean, especially when Muda came out, they would be going crazy for the whole entire match. So definitely. Uh, so you, I mean, training in Dory Funk school, also doing work in all Japan for wrestling. Uh, I obviously know you from uh, seeing you wrestled up here in Texas. How did you get uh, down here to this area? Uh, 
basically, uh, when I moved from North Carolina, uh, I lived in Charlotte until high school. When I started high school in Florida, my parent, my family moved down here. And then once I started training at Dory School, I started living on my own there in Florida. Mm-hmm. And then my parents moved here. My mom and my stepdad moved here to uh, to Fort Worth. And um, then I was just kind of, I had been training with Dory for three years. And I was like, oh, you know what? try to go back to school and stuff like that and my mom said that she would help me out so I came out here so it's really not that cool of a thing <laughs> it's basically <laughs> you know hey we have a house you can stay with us as long as you go to school and you know hey if you get a job that won't be too bad and then I kind of um you know I, I was kind of not really done with wrestling but I just I didn't really know anybody here uh but the good thing about uh me moving out here uh, was my brother um he started training with dory like my last six months there and then uh once i left he moved back up to where we used to live in jacksonville in florida and he started training with another um another person up there and they had a promotion and there was a guy buck buchanan who i guess he used to manage in like houston and san antonio that kind of area Mm-hmm. And he told me about a guy, David Fuller, and through him, um, I wrestled uh, a few places down here. And then uh, I met Chris Wolf, and I wrestled Chris Wolf in Fort Worth. And then through Wolf, I started going down to Austin. Then I got into that Austin scene. Uh, so, I've, I mean, I've been wrestling in Texas for three or four years now, about four years now. So... Uh, I guess now I just kind of got into, uh, I don't know, I guess Austin, it's kind of a little bit different, like Austin, Houston, San Antonio, it's a little bit different mm-hmm. than a lot of the other areas, I guess. Um, you get a little bit more exposure, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I speaking of the Austin area, I got to work with you uh, as a part of Inspire Pro Wrestling now, uh, and, and you've been starting to break out a bit there, I, I would say. I, I would say... <laughs> One of your uh, one of your bigger breakout matches, I think, was uh, back in April. You had a phenomenal contest with uh, Scott Summers. Uh, I think that showcased a bit of uh, that technical wrestling style that I think not a lot of people go to necessarily. But I mean, I think you showcased in that match that you have that style within you. Uh, how how are you feeling after that match, and then sort of the idea that you know getting to showcase something that maybe you don't get to show all that often? Uh. I don't know. I, I kind of, uh, the reaction is a little bit different <laughs> than what mm-hmm. I was, not a different than what I was expecting, but it was just a little bit different because, um, usually in my matches, I would go out there and I would kind of do my little thing and, you know, it wouldn't be too, too serious or, you know, it wouldn't be too, maybe a hundred percent of my, uh, of my ability. And it's not something that, I didn't take anybody seriously or anything like that. I guess I just didn't take myself seriously. Mm. And uh, really, uh, not to get off the topic of Inspire or, or Scott, but I guess my match that I had with Gary, Gary J uh, mm. in Austin, uh, kind of put that like, hey, you know, kind of, kind of have a little bit of something here. You might not think that you're the greatest thing in the world, but, you know, you got a little bit of skill. So maybe, uh, you know, Gary lit a little bit of a fire up in my ass. And then once I found out I was wrestling Scott, um, you know, of course I prepared for the match where it's just going to be, you know, brawling and Scott's going to go out and be crazy. And Scott Summers, you know, what everybody Mm -hmm. thinks Scott Summers is. And um, I think the match has gotten really good responses and I didn't think that it would get kind of the level of responses that it would Uh, not to say that, it's you know anything wrong with Scott because I mean Scott's a legend here in Texas pretty much and um, I knew that it would get good reviews just because Scott was in it but then to hear people's you know reactions to it and um, yeah I feel like it it showed a little bit of a different side for me because a lot of people see me kind of joking and haha not really taking myself seriously mm-hmm. um, and it kind of uh, brought a different side to Scott a little bit because he really didn't get out of the ring. Maybe he got out of the ring once, but he didn't pick up a chair and go crazy or anything like that. I think he went and kissed his daughter or something, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something something nice and, and not crazy. Uh, but 
But um, yeah, it's just it's it's cool to me to think that I can get in there with Scott Summers and uh, kind of impress people uh, and and him show a different side and then bring out a different side in me also because. I mean, he was he was doing some really good stuff too, and it was making me uh, go through my bag of tricks to to try to beat him. So um, I think that's just one of those things. I just think I'm just riding this wave of the <laughs> 2014, just riding this wave of different uh, different things. Because that kind of that kind of started things there at Inspire. I think uh, I had that match. My first match was with uh, Great Depression there, and um, Yes, and I would encourage you to, I mean, to check that one out to sort of see, like what you mentioned, sort of that that more funny side of you, and that and in contrast the match with Scott, uh, definitely. Yeah, I would, and I would agree with that. That match that you had with Gary J, I think, opened a lot, your, uh, a lot of people's eyes as far as I think what you could do, sort of in a, yeah. in a match. So, so definitely I mean, not to toot my horn, toot my <laughs> own horn, but you know, toot toot. I mean, that's just the <laughs> thing about it is uh, when I was training with Dora, I didn't have to say anything like. I was trained by Dory Fong Jr. at All Japan. And it's funny because when I came here, it's kind of like, oh, say that, say that. And it's just like, I, don't, I mean, you know, people are going to hear that and then they see some jacket, you know. <laughs> I don't want to cut them. It's like some, you know, some, <laughs> oh, some weirdo awesome. coming out there, you know. <laughs> and and is Dory trained this guy? Like, this is weird. And I think, you know, people have heard it so much that – um they might get tired of me saying it. And then, you know, now I can actually go out there and say, Hey, you know, I train with Dory and this is what I can do. This is the reason why I went to Japan, or this is what I learned from Japan, you know, uh, more so than just, Hey, I did these things. And now I'm just kind of, I'm just going to float along now here. It's, it's more like I'm more focused and determined now, um, to make good on what I keep on saying that I've done because, you know, I can't keep on dwelling on the past. Like, oh yeah, I went to Japan, but I went to Japan in 2008. You know, it's six mm -hmm. years ago. <laughs> well, definitely, I think you're also. I mean, you're getting a lot of breakup stuff, breakout stuff, uh, especially this year. I know recently, uh, not too long ago in Dallas, you actually got to wrestle uh, one and only Johnny Gargano in a in a, yeah. I, believe, I believe Johnny's first ever match uh, in Texas. Uh, what yeah. was that like getting to, getting to wrestle someone of uh, uh, Gargano's uh, caliber? The whole shebang, Johnny Gargano. Uh, it was it was really cool. I think it's one of those things. Like I said, it's that wave. Like 2014 has been kind of a wave. I've wrestled a lot of different people. Um, you know, with a lot of different companies. Uh, starting with Gary, and then I uh, this year I wrestled like Mazada and Scott Summers, uh, Watanabe, and then uh, recently I worked uh, Gargano, like you said. And that was crazy because he's somebody I didn't know that he had been wrestling for so long. Because uh, I think he and I are the same age, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he's like a ten-year or fifteen-year veteran or something like that. I don't even know. He's he's like he's not even thirty, but I think he's been wrestling for thirty years. Uh, <laughs> but he's he's somebody like Scott to where I I actually like really trained hard for it because I always hear. Um, you know, how good he is. And I, I've seen how good he is and the shape that he's in. And, uh, just, uh, he can hit moves from just out of anywhere. And I actually got, uh, I talked to Eric Cannon for a little bit of help. I was like, you know, what, what should I do? He's like, just make sure you're ready. <laughs> like that's all you can do. Just, you know, train and do your cardio and stuff and just try to be in there. And we had a, we had a really good competitive match and, uh, it's something where, um, you know, I, I, I lost, but at the same time, I got this really good sense of where I am as a wrestler, I guess, and, um, what I can actually do in the ring. So, uh, but yeah, anytime, um, you get to wrestle somebody with that much experience. And I mean, he's been, uh, Dragon Gate, Dragon Gate USA, PWG, you mm -hmm. know, places like that. Um, so anyone with that much experience, uh, you want to be, you want to put out, you know, you want to, you want to be on your best and then, uh, see if you can beat them at their best also. But I feel like that match made me better as a wrestler. Awesome. And I know on the same night of, of that match, you actually won a battle Royal as well. I, uh, 
uh, Terry Gordy Memorial Battle Royal. So definitely a bit of a an added uh, bonus to that. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was cool. I actually got to get in the ring, and uh, Terry Gordy's wife Connie, uh, she presented the the trophy, the Terry Gordy Battle Memorial Battle Royal uh, trophy to me, and uh, that was pretty cool. I mean, um, I think it it means a lot to Texas wrestling, uh, Mm -hmm. to have, not for me to win it, you know, but just to have something like that, uh, since Terry Gordy was somebody that meant a lot to this area, well, you know, the Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth area, the Texas area, um, Mm -hmm. working for the Von Erichs and being in the Freebirds, but also, um, I was a huge, huge Terry Gordy fan, um, in their time in Georgia championship wrestling. Uh, and some of the things that was, it's, kind of funny to me that um not only would i be in the in the battle royal but i would win it and uh it bring it brought back a lot of memories to when i was training with dory and he would tell us stories about terry or yeah terry gordy and uh he would sometimes when i would get in the ring he would say do this and you know make it look like terry gordy and then when i get done (laughs) with it he'd be like there's terry gordy you know he would he would make (laughs) me do that with a lot of other wrestlers but uh, he would always compare me to Terry Gordy in a, in a certain way. Um, so for that, the, another thing that came <laughs> kind of full circle, I guess, with uh, first memory being of Terry Funk and then training, uh, getting trained by his brother and then having his brother tell me I look like Terry Gordy in the ring and then have win this Terry Gordy uh, Memorial Battle Royal. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Definitely, definitely comes all full circle. Um, so the, one of the questions we do ask everyone on the show, uh, we are, since we are, you know, we cover independent wrestling, sort of a, the whole, uh, idea of independent wrestling and, and people have, you know, took this question a lot of different ways. Uh, you're allowed to take it however you want it to. Uh, but the question is, what is your favorite thing about independent wrestling? And in turn, what is your least favorite thing about independent wrestling? Uh, my favorite thing about professional wrestling, independent professional wrestling uh, independent uh, wrestling, whatever, whatever mixes. Well, I mean, favorite thing about professional wrestling is that it's still going. Really, mm-hmm. uh, my favorite thing about independent uh, pro wrestling is that there's um, people out there that just bust bust their ass, you know, day in and day out. And there's a uh, um, you know a lot of hardworking, dedicated people that are trying to reach the pinnacle of what they can be as professional wrestlers. Uh, uh, on the flip side of that, the thing that I hate is <laughs> people that, uh, don't try, uh, in professional wrestling that just kind of skate by. Uh, I was kind of guilty about that. You know, I didn't really hit the gym too, too hard when I first started training and I thought that I was some kind of natural or something like that, you know, but, uh, mm. you kind of, you kind of learn that the, the, the business is, <laughs> is bigger than you and, uh, it'll move on without you. So if you don't try and if you don't, put anything into it then you're just going to be you know on the side of the road with your thumb sticking out trying to hitch along with someone so um so yeah that's 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 my favorite thing about pro wrestling it's just that it's it survives for so long and it's kind of turned into this wacky <laughs> soap opera <laughs> type of thing <laughs> with costumes and stuff which i mean i know it's not that's not all wrestling but um I just like that there's so many different kinds of aspects to wrestling. You have the the funny stuff, you have the serious stuff, you have the crazy outfits and, um, you know, things like that. And I think the worst thing about professional wrestling is probably Thomas Shire. He's just a low life dirtbag. Uh, doesn't deserve anything that he gets. So <laughs> I, I think I think that guy's okay. He's, 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 he's okay. Well, you know, you're you know, you're a horrible person too. So I would see why yeah. you would say that. No. Yeah. I, I, I yeah, will say. Stick I will say I have a sketchy uh, first impression of him so far. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, have you seen his match with Scott Summers? Scott should have killed him. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> He got to work. Uh, he got to work. Johnny Gargano. This guy is a schmuck. <laughs> well, no. yeah. well, I'm sure our audience will make the difference. But um, well. I, I guess the last question I, I want to leave with you. Uh, you mentioned sort of getting a lot of opportunity in 2014. Do you have any, uh, I guess, upcoming career goals or maybe people you want to wrestle, places, you know, uh, any any sort of goals that you have in uh, have in mind? Uh. 
just to kind of be active with it. Um, keep doing Inspire because that's I've been getting a lot of opportunities there. Um, I got to wrestle someone uh, at the last show, Davy Vega. Uh, yes. Shout out, shout out to old Davy Vega. Uh, one, Another one match I encourage. I encourage people to check out when it does come out because that is a phenomenal yeah. match as well. Yeah, you, you have to pay for that one. You didn't have to pay for the Scott Summers one, so <laughs> <laughs> you got to pay for the Vega match. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just um, I think that's <laughs> I'm a horrible pro- professional wrestler because I have no ambitions. No, I, uh, <laughs> I mean you know staying staying active uh, at Inspire doing doing what I do there. Um, possibly trying to uh, branch out to different places. Uh, I don't really have any short-term goals just because I know that certain things are going to take a while to get there. Uh, You know, traveling internationally, hopefully going back to Japan sometime, you know, in the whenever before I retire. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know, I like to wrestle PWG. I like watching PWG uh, ROHs. Is, uh, is great to uh, really any any place around the United States, anywhere anywhere in the world, pretty much. I, uh, if there was a wrestling organization on the moon, I would I would wrestle on the moon. That would be awesome. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just feel I just feel fortunate in my wrestling career. Uh, I feel like when I was training in Florida, I kind of had to build up, but I really wasn't building up in my mind. I was building up because I was at Dory's, but I really wasn't branching out in Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I definitely don't want to make that same mistake. Um, uh, even though I do wrestle different places here in Texas, I still like to branch out in Texas, um, you know, branch out around the world. Uh, just repeating myself. Um, hopefully I, I believe I'll be at St. Louis Anarchy on the 25th and then I'll have Inspire on the 27th of next week. And hopefully I get to wrestle. I've heard some rumblings about who I may wrestle uh, at St. Louis, even though I don't think anything's been announced. So hopefully Pierre doesn't listen to this and then try to kill me when I get up there. Um, <laughs> and then me and Gabe Roach, that'll, that'll be fun. I look forward to that and Inspire. Uh, I read his little interview that he said, and he said that I wasn't too intelligent. So we'll see if I'm intelligent or not about certain things. Um, yeah, I'd like to. I heard Sting might be coming back. Maybe I'll try to get that <laughs> contract. You know, hopefully I can wrestle Sting. <laughs> that's, a, that's a way to. That's a way to cap off the career. I would say. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you Stinger. You know, let's let's, let's <laughs> wrestle this WrestleMania. Uh, WrestleMania 31, brother. What do you think? <laughs> I, I'd book it. I, I, if if yeah. anyone, Kevin Dunn, if you're listening. But, you yeah, know, I, I mean, I would, I would cut my hair and do the surfer thing. I don't even care. Just to, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually like Sting. I like a lot of people that a lot of people hate. John Cena, Sting. You love John you Cena. Know. I know you love John Cena. Yeah, yeah. um well thank you for joining us um if anyone (laughs) wants to follow you on social media or or see you at an upcoming event uh uh, where can we find you uh uh on the internet on the internet you can find me on the twitters uh at not that shire uh probably need to get a new handle or something but yeah if you can if you can follow me i think i have like just as many as scotty santiago now so (laughs) <laughs> kind of uh kind of hurts hurts my ego <laughs> a little bit. Uh and then the only two dates that I really have left in what is this June? June July. Whoa. Uh, yeah. July would be Saint Louis Anarchy in Alton, Illinois. Uh the Knights of Columbus. Uh the Young Bucks will be there. So if you don't want to see me, at least you get to see the Young Bucks. Uh and Johnny Gargano and ACH will be wrestling. Uh, that'll be on the 25th next Friday. Uh, then I'll be at Inspire for the big, uh, what is this one called, Eamon? Do you know? This is a no turning back event. Uh, no uh, turning back. There'll be no turning back from Thomas Shire. On the yes, no turning back from this interview where I just made long-winded comments about how I <laughs> want to travel the world uh, and wrestle this thing. 
But, uh, yeah, I'll be wrestling Gay Broach on there. And also, the NWA World Women's Championship will be defended. Yes, indeed. You want to take this one? Yeah, you, you take it. I can, I can provide it now, sure. Barbie Hayden and yeah. me. And, and there's a lot, of, yeah. lot of, a lot of women's talent uh, meeting on that show. So it should be really fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, come and see me. Say yeah. hi. Bring me Sting <laughs> action figures and things like that. Sting memorabilia. Absolutely. I'm always for it. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-order WWE 2K15 for me. <laughs> That's true, yes. Are you, you going to play as Crow Sting or Surfer Sting? Because you can play as both. Uh, ooh, maybe I'll have them fight each other. That's a good idea. Yeah, that'll be ooh, trippy. Oh, you know what? I'll create <laughs> myself, and then I'll wrestle Sting at WrestleMania 13, because that'll probably be as close as I can to get to that. <laughs> awesome. So thank you, uh, Shire, for joining us. Uh, and I believe Sorg, uh, it's time to talk about some indie wrestling stuff that's happening. Thanks, Eamon, for that great interview. Some great talent going on there. And I love that Ryan Mitchell got name dropped there, uh, who, of course, we know up here in RWA. We interviewed him previously on Wrestling Mayhem Show. And he's a I, big- I think this, is, I think this uh, continues my theory that our, word, that our worlds are interlinking. Seriously? Because I'm like, and like I, I put something on there. You're like, no, nah, it's, it's a different Ryan Mitchell. I'm like, no, there can only be <laughs> one Ryan Mitchell. Uh, so I looked up one. his Wikipedia page, and, uh, and yeah, he went to fucking – uh, conservatory or whatever they called it with uh, Dory. Uh, went to Japan and all this stuff. Um, so apparently has not done anything since 2010 according to the Wikipedia. <laughs> Thanks, Wikipedia. Whoops. Um, they don't have Wikipedia in West Newton apparently. Uh, but anyways. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, uh, uh, speaking of Ryan Mitchell, he was in the main event this past week and of course with the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Big things happening there. Just announced, uh, just to prove that. I mean, uh, this is the guys they did the salute the troops earlier this year, um, which was a rousing success. They 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 brought in twice as many people as typically come to their shows, um, and that's with no real big names. Like Lodi's there, but I don't consider. I mean, he was in WCW, you know, twelve years ago, if longer, I guess. Um, and now, uh, 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 Matt Hardy coming next week or next month, according to their website, uh, some big stuff coming up. Great to hear. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Aeroform was there this past weekend, took on Sons of Strong Style, uh, which is a, a tag team that's actually returning to RWA. Um, so it's really good to see kind of the talent is even in that regard picking up. They're attracting guys like Aeroform that we know from IWC, from Prime Wrestling, and they've been all over the place. I think he's, they've been on your radar as well, right? Definitely, yes, absolutely. They've been they've been doing you know near everything. So, mm-hmm. um, and then on top of that, a great holy crap! They, there was two new no DQ matches, not noted <laughs> on my sheet, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Women's match: Jesse Bell Smothers against uh, Serafina, friend of the sh- Serafini, friend of the show, been on this show uh, previously. Uh, uh, killer, they they killed it, um, and of course, Generation Dead. That I apparently plug into the show every week. Uh, that somebody told me um, that maybe in the tag team, uh, but they took on Wild West. Great, sporadic. Holy crap! I hope we got everything. With the cameras. <laughs> yes. Uh, all over the place match. There were weapons. There was a blow-up doll. It the They dragged, I think it was Gory's girlfriend, into the ring. Uh, it was absolutely nuts. Um, and that is the kind of stuff. I love the excitement they're bringing there. And it's something different that you don't expect at, you know, you know, you can label these guys a small town indie a lot of times, um, but they're bringing mm-hmm. something really exciting there. And it's really cool to see that, and uh, really not a bad match on the card. You know, um, you know, awesome. even from the last month, I think it was a huge improvement. Um, <laughs> you know, it just just a great collection of talent they have going on there. Uh, so, so keep an eye out for that. Like I said, the digital download should be out. I, I think Wednesday this week. So probably by the time you're listening to this, if you're listening to this later um and, and a lot of fun there and 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 you know what that's one of those shows and i know you talk about you work with inspire but uh every time i go there it's uh, uh wheels is a buddy you know um and it's friends and it's so not that there's no pressure but um it's a lot easier time there it, it feels like and i i don't you know i can't really put my finger on on why that is um but you know through the night even you know a changing card and, and unexpected stuff us trying to catch 
Um, you know, it's 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 a lot more fun through the night. Um, it, it seems uh, for the crew in general, for the people that we bring in there and everything. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, check them out. RWA live dot com. There's actually a lot of great pictures over there. Uh, from friend of the mayhem show, Jen Carlin, she got to come along hey. and do some pictures. Yep, there's some of the uh, craziness with the Wild West. Yes, it got very naughty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but uh, I wanted to get something because I know she's been taking great pictures at the WWE shows uh, from the stands with us. Uh, so so I was like, hey, do you want to get a little closer? She wouldn't get close to the ring though. <laughs> I thought it was, you can go up, you can stand by the ring. And she took it mostly, uh, I think she's kind of easing into it. Um, plus, it, get it did get a little crazy, so I understand her reservations <laughs> to it. So um, I think she is able to join us again next month, so I hope, I hope she actually gets out there with Chachi with the camera and gets some good close-ups close of, of the action. But even you know from the stuff that she got, uh, I think it's some, some, some awesome shots going on. Uh, great sequences, too, on some of these moves, too. So... Like especially some of the arrow form and the generation dead stuff. So, um, so I think that's all I have on RW. Oh, IWC this weekend. Uh, yes, the show. They're big proving grounds events. Proving grounds, a favorite show of mine. It's gonna be interesting uh, because uh, I, this is gonna be a one camera show, and Eamon, you know how I feel about that. <laughs> So yeah, if yeah. you want the best seat, you definitely need to go if you're in the area. It will be provided. Um, I, I will say, yes, it's going to be one camera, and uh, it will be priced accordingly, I think. I'm, I'm not settled on how we're going to handle this. Um, I will say it's outside of my control as far as this goes. Uh, but a, a, a pretty a pretty decent line up there you know again talking any stuff and maybe you know some of these guys because i'm looking at the card as generally happens with this and and you know my introduction to sandy guevara still can't yes and yeah, getting better at it i fucked up his name last year too um but okay. was as a who is this pasty kid that why the hell am i going to care about this guy started at this show like a year ago and now yeah. he was a breakout of super indie uh, but looking at Proving Grounds this year, they call it the Young Talent Initiative. I keep clicking on your face instead of the graphic. Uh, RJ City taking on friend of the show Keith Hot. That, that should be a good match. Promise last time they were in White Oak. Uh, six talented dudes. We've had uh, half of that tag team on here against Marshall, friend of the show, and Madison. So mixed tag action. Look at that. Hey. Uh, John McChesney, a friend of the show as well, against Asylum. Really cool guy doing some great stuff out of Canada. I believe he's, he, he hails from uh, fun Instagram to follow with Asylum, by the way. I think it's Flatliner Asylum most places. Um, and he's done some, I think he did some recent uh, backstage stuff. Oh, what was he? He was some oh, he kind was, of, um, he was a doctor was a, or something? He was a doctor for the Paul Heyman segment. Uh, yes. Like, like, I don't know how long ago, like maybe like eight months ago. Maybe a little like seven or eight yeah, yeah, ago. something like was, that. Some, yeah, yeah. I remember Brad Maddox being there. I, I did, did, but yeah, he was definitely that guy. So if you re remember that guy, so uh, on, on, so on you he, you have seen him on the TV, uh, but he seems yeah. like a, he's a fun guy, a cool guy to talk to. Uh, this is the this is where it gets sketchy for me. Lee Ryan against a friend of the show Andrew Palace. Uh, I've personally never heard of Lee Ryan, but uh, he's got an inch. He's got some nice. Uh, uh, Sideburns. And tell I me, that. I know he's, Nick, he's not. Afraid, he's definitely not afraid uh, to show off. You know the chest there. Uh, yeah. There you go. There, yes. Probably the perfect so guy to take on Andrew Palace. Um, Nikki Valentino, I'm I'm familiar with. He's been into IWC, uh, Big Bang Slam, Prime Wrestling when that was going. What is this uh, reject from um, um, Silent Hill that I'm looking at here? Do I have no clue. Dravaco. What the I'm hell guessing, is going on here? I'm guessing that's the pronunciation, but he's got an interesting looking mask. Holy uh, crap. I can say that. D-R-A-V-A-K-O, if you want to look that up. And I don't know. I Maybe I, it means something else. You'll get something ridiculous out of that. I'm I YouTubing have no idea. a lot of these guys. You, you're tonight, YouTubing so, them? Because I, I need to figure out who this dramatic is. I kind of like, like to go like blind media. into this thing. So you'll probably uh, hear me, <laughs> as I am solo camming it, hear a little bit of holy, holy shit on the... On the on the camera because I can't contain myself because <laughs> there are surprises. Uh, also, uh, friends of the show like Bobby Shields, Aiden Vale uh, in a six man tag. Uh, Ethan Wright, I think, is a new name here. Uh, so it, really good looking dude. it will be interesting. It's a I mean it's a smaller show. It's a cheaper card. If you're in the area, but, uh, but you get to maybe see some people that maybe you're new. It, 
Exactly. Okay. If, if you're like, if you like the random nature and and early discovery of indie wrestling, this is your show uh, with IWC. And 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 you never know. You never know which of these guys, crazy Silent Hill guy, might be in Super Indie next year. For all you know, could quite possibly be. I'm laughing you now, and you, you'll, we'll see what my reaction is uh, a week from now. That that'll be very interesting. Uh, what we'll definitely, else? Definitely have to gauge that. What else is going on, Eamon? There's some stuff going oh, on. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, and go to iwcwrestling.com for more information. I, I forgot to stick that out. Yes, there. definitely. Um, there's some stuff going on in the indie wrestling world this weekend that I do want to touch on. Uh, there's a really cool event for a company that I've actually mentioned before here on the show. Uh, Smash Wrestling, uh, if you are a fan from the Canadian uh, uh, Can- Canuck, is that proper? I don't know. Uh, wrestling area. We just pissed uh, somebody off. I'm sorry to all my uh, Canadian fans out there. Um, Smash uh, of for Smash Wrestling. Uh, this seems like to, uh, seems to be one of their bigger events that they're having uh, uh, this year, bringing a lot of really good named talent um, from you know locals in Canada and, and ver- varying uh, professional wrestlers. Uh, Kevin Steen, who obviously is make, is winding down uh, in professional wrestling, or at least on independent professional wrestling, uh, is taking on Tyson Dukes. Uh, Christopher Daniels uh, is taking on Takaki Watanabe, who I've gotten to work with in Inspire Pro. Uh, you know, he's from New Japan Pro Wrestling, sort of their top rookie, and he's really, Jeez. he's really become one of his own here in, in in the Americas. You know, he's wrestling a lot more for Ring of Honor now. Like, he's breaking out, and that's really cool. Also, I encourage anybody to, uh, if uh, whatever Smash Wrestling's uh, YouTube is, watch the interview Takaki Watanabe does. Uh, to promote this match because he says some really naughty things and I think America's teaching him this and I'm not I'm not a fan. <laughs> but, um, also, Chris Hero is going to be there taking on Josh Alexander. Uh, the Super Smash Brothers. There's a women's match featuring Cherry Bomb against Xandra Bale. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff on this card. So uh, if you want to get more information for that, you can go to smash-wrestling.com and it's in ter- the Toronto area Sunday, July 20th at the E-Zone. Uh, in Toronto, so nice. that, uh, that is a, that's a pretty awesome card they have going on there. Some cool it stuff. Is, happening it in looks Toronto. really good. I, I also mentioned before uh, about Smash Wrestling. They actually they have one of their more recent events, their Rival Schools events, up for free digital download on their nice. website, uh, and that features an ACH Michael Elgin match, Chris Hero against Takaki Watanabe. So um, go check that out. Also, got to note, I, I just took a quick peek at the roster page. Um, they have faces like we know, like ACH. Uh, I think the yeah, other AJ Styles, uh, at least one half of Arrow Four, Mac Cross, Veda Scott. So, so a lot of crossover appeal from I know some of the guys that we follow uh, down here. So. I, I don't know if it's. Uh, I know at some point coming up soon, they're holding their Canusa Classic event, which is the Can USA event, which is a women's uh, not not tournament in a sense, but it's uh, a Canadian team versus an American team. Uh, it's, it's interesting stuff, so uh, go definitely go support Smash Wrestling. They're doing some really interesting stuff over in the Canadian area, so definitely go support them. Awesome. Uh, uh, that's that, that's one I definitely wanted to point out. Uh, there's a lot of indie events happening this this weekend, uh, and if you know of one that's in your area, please go support it. Go to the show, buy you know, you know a wrestler's merchandise, go watch their match, and 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 be loud and be crazy and and love it because. You know, these guys really do bust their ass. So, um, anywhere around the uh, indie wrestling world, if there is mm-hmm. indie wrestling show up to it. So, Certainly. Uh, definitely. So, yeah, uh, that, that's all the indie uh, uh, shows and, and topics and news uh, points I have for this week. Sort of <laughs> nothing, nothing really sticking out there for me for discussion or anything. Well, I'm sure we'll have uh, something after this weekend. And, uh, <laughs> at, and next week... Uh, well, I, well, one thing in next week will be the uh, gathering of the Juggalos, so I'll be exposed yes. to a lot of wrestling over those days. Absolutely. You'll get to see uh, uh, last week's uh, interview, uh, Matt Tremont. Yes, so yes, definitely, definitely so. fun stuff there. Uh, and and you get to see Shockwave the robot. I'm kind of jealous. I'll be honest. <laughs> Uh, the, the 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 one we missed the guy that we almost interviewed guy question mark we almost interviewed with shot the uh, robot uh, 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 machine I don't know I don't know um, it's more than a man I well we'll figure out how to classify uh, it Amy it's been fun great interview this week as always I've been getting great feedback on the show 
uh, in emails in person. It's been awesome. Uh, we're definitely on the right track. We got something going on here with this indie mayhem thing. I think. I think Let's we see. do. I, I like this little this little something that we're putting together. Yes, so it's I mean. a nice capper to my Tuesdays for sure. So <laughs> with that, you can join us. We're at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com, of course. iTunes, Stitcher. YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, audio, video formats, however you'd like to. But please comment, share, like us, uh, favorite us, whatever that method is, wherever you're listening, watching us, consuming us. Uh, and you can also drop a line to goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com, 412-206-WMS0. And, of course, we're here live at live.sorgatronmedia.com uh, every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. No. 11 p.m. Cent- oh god, 11 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central Time, and of course, thanks to Basic Sickness for our theme music, BasicSickness.com. I'm at Sorgatron. He's at Aimin Two, please, and uh, you better support your indie, re- indie wrestling anytime. Not just all the time. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up for the taste of the pain. Oh, sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down.